Hello and welcome to SketchUp Assist. Uh, today we're going to be talking about components in SketchUp. Um, we'll do a little bit of comparison with groups. Uh, there is some confusion when you're starting out typically between groups and components, trying to understand when's the right time to use um, those two uh, solutions. Um, you're generally, when you have any complex structure, you are going to want to have a group or a component. Um, and really the difference lies in um, how you're going to be manipulating copies of, of that particular object. And so if you're going to want to make copies that you, that you want to perform the same operations on across a large number of copies, then components is going to be a very valuable tool for you. Let's start off with a simple geometry. Um, let's go into group. Let's create a group first. Um, now, if you want to learn more about groups, there's an earlier video on that, so I won't go into a lot of details. Uh, let's perform just a simple operation on this group, just to kind of give a little, make it a little easier to see, frankly. Um, let's come in and make a copy of this group. And a uh, little tip when you're, um, you got to move a, an object. If you hit the option key, um, you can create a copy of that. Uh, of course, you can also, um, you can also select it and um, do the relevant Mac or PC control copy uh, operation. Okay, now what happens when you have a group and you want to edit an instance of that group? Uh, well, it's an individual object, right? If we come in and, and edit that instance of this group that doesn't impact the original um, object that we created, right? And so that can be useful if you know that you're going to take a starting point and you're going to be making a unique, distinct object from that. Uh, but what if you are making copies of, of this object and you want to perform then potentially operations in the future on that object and have the operations performed across all copies of that object? Um, this is where components can come in real handy. So let's start again with a simple geometry. Now this time, let's make this a component. Now you'll notice something different also in components. You do have a dialog box um, and you can name this component. So it's something simple for now, and then a simple test component. Okay. Now, there's a lot that goes into the definition and the description. Uh, we won't get into details here. In the future, we'll talk about more of more planning strategy for more complex uh, projects. Uh, but for now, we don't need to worry about it. And we're also going to ignore all of these settings for now to demonstrate some of the core features of a component. Okay. So... One thing you'll notice is that once you create the component, you double click in, the bounding box shows up. It very much looks like a group at this point. Um, you can perform operations on this much like you can a group. Okay. But where you're going to start to see the different behavior show up is when you create copies of this. So again, let's move this. Let's just hit the option key to create a, a copy. So now we have a component and a copy. And if I double click into one instance of this component and I hover over that and push pull or even if I just select a face notice that it's also highlighting the face of the original uh, component and if I actually perform an operation on this it actually performs the operation on both of the components and so you can see here how if you had a large number of these uh, components large number of copies of these components uh, and you wanted to operate on them in a very similar or effectively identical way, um, you would come in and, and create copies of that component and then whatever operations you apply would apply to all of them. Now let's say you have um, some copies of these, but at some point you have some that you need to distinguish uh, from the others. So what you can do is come in, let's create one more copy here. Okay. Now, if you come in, notice nothing selected. If I just click once somewhere on that object, you'll notice that all of the edges are highlighted and I could come in and make this unique. And then what happens is if I come in and go into select mode, select the surface, notice now I'm not selecting these surfaces. And if I just do a push pull, uh, notice now I'm only impacting uh, this unique copy. Now, if you then wish to have the component behavior going forward with this new copy, 
Um, let me let's step back real quick too and notice something. Let's go into entity info and let's notice that my first component um, they have renamed it because now it is in fact a unique. Um, it is now a unique component, and so you can come in here and you can say my first component copy maybe not not a great name but maybe better than hash one. And if I come in now to move mode and I slide this over, I hit my option key again. Okay, now I've made a copy of that new component. If I double click in, see my bounding box, nothing new there. And notice when I select the face, it's selecting the face of that original. And I can come in and, and add it in. And, and just to be clear, right, this applies to whichever copy of that particular um, component that you click on. Okay, and then one other thing to note is if I check the entity info, um, it looks like I didn't save it. Copy. There we go. Okay, now it's saved. Um, so you'll notice that the names travel with the specific components, and if I click back on my originals here, uh, notice that they um, notice that they are still there. Okay. So there are a number of places that could be you know this could be useful, but where I'm generally using it, uh, I design quite a few decks, and and I find it very useful. For example, when I'm making um, posts, so we'll just do. So if I'm putting a cover on the deck, and I'm not going to get specific here uh, on this, let's just assume this is a six by six uh, deck post. So let's just say this is a six by six pressure treated uh, post. And if I make copies of this, um, again, I'm just moving this and hitting my option key. And I'm not going to worry about the placement because, again, this is just for a quick demonstration. What happens is I come in and double click on this. Now I can set these posts to the same height. Now, there is something to keep an eye on here. Um, and that is when you copy these, you're, you're copying them in the exact orientation. Okay, so what I mean by that, let's say I come in and I want to put a, a notch in here for a, a beam to set on. If I, if I notch this, so this is also valuable. You can see I can notch these all identically. But notice that on this case, my notch is on the inside. And on this case, my notch is on the outside. This is something that you will need to contend with. Sometimes this will matter. Sometimes it, it won't matter to you. But if you do, do want sort of consistent um, alignment on features, you will need to come in and, and do some orientation potentially on those um, components when you move them around. So now you'll notice that as I come in and, and adjust my the seat for my beam, um, that they're adjusting in the proper orientation. Okay. Uh, so depending on the complexity of the, um, of the, of the project or of the complexity of the component, you might need to do some things like that. Okay. So that is, uh, that is a high level intro to components. Um, this will get you very far uh, in your design. So you're, you're more than likely as you're coming in creating complex projects or complex geometries, you're going to want to use groups or components. So just keep in mind, um, groups are good if you don't think you're going to be editing or making co copies of that group that, that need to be manipulated in a similar way. If on the other hand, you're going to be making copies of that object and you want to be able to manipulate all those copies uh, at the same time and, and effectively identically, then uh, you're going to want to look at using components. And that's it. Good luck.